The cardiopulmonary and kidney disease panel consists of adult and pediatric providers uh, with expertise in sickle cell disease. What's unique about this panel is it also consists of subspecialists in uh, heart disease, so cardiologists, as well as lung specialists, pulmonary doctors, uh, as well as kidney specialists. We also have two patient representatives on the panel just to get their perspectives and to help us with the development of the guidelines, which is really, really important. We have several aims of the guidelines. The, the first is to have the ability to collect the, all of the data and have systematic reviews done of the data and then make recommendations based on that data. And the other thing the guidelines do is really help us identify areas where there are gaps in research and where we really need to do more work so that we can make stronger recommendations and really help guide practice. There are lots of different complications uh, related to the heart, uh, to the lungs, as well as the kidneys that we're starting to see emerge. And oftentimes they emerge because of not only curative therapies, but disease modifying therapies that we have so that when patients live longer, we start to see some of those complications. Some of the most important recommendations that come out of our guideline panel are about things that might help get over some of the disparities of care that our patients face, so in particular recommendations around renal transplant. Providers think that patients with sickle cell disease don't do as well after kidney transplant, and so often it's not offered. With our review of the data, it's clear that that is not true and that people with sickle cell disease should be eligible for kidney transplant and evaluation for kidney transplant, just like other people who have end-stage renal disease. And the other thing is looking at uh, the treatment of blood pressure. In general, African Americans, there is disparity in care and they don't necessarily meet their blood pressure goals. And so these guidelines emphasize that our patients should fall into the general population guideline recommendations about blood pressure management. Ash is taking a great step towards improving the health of people living with sickle cell disease by helping us develop these guidelines. The most rewarding outcome from playing a role in the guidelines is to really see them implemented, is to see that people are getting better care and driving research into appropriate areas where we think there are important questions that need to be answered.